Welcome to this course on Cryptography and Network Security. I'm Andrew Jovina and I will be guiding you through this course. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Information Technology in Sri Ramakrishna Institute of Technology and I hold a PhD in Computer Science and Engineering. My research is a blend of artificial intelligence, cryptography, network security and distribution systems. Let us now dive into the introduction to cryptography. <coughs> Anyone interested in this course must first understand the necessity for cryptography and network security. The graph represented here is inspired by the graph which was released by CERT in 2001. This was further extended by certain researchers from the University of Adelaide until the year 2016. But the inference from this graph is quite common. The attack sophistication has increased over the period. It can be also be observed that with the rise of sophistication using tools, the knowledge required by an adversary or the resource which is required to be exploited is low. Hence, it is very hard for any potential resource to counter an attack. It would be found that a lot of attacks are listed in the graph. I shall provide an outline of these attacks sometime in future. In this course, the first four modules are designed to obtain a basic insight on various cryptographic techniques and the last module provides an outline of the issues and applications deployed in network security. Going back into historical times, it could be observed that cryptography had been an art of writing and solving codes. Cryptography found its role in engineering especially in computer engineering in late 1980s. It deals with mathematics in specific discrete mathematics. There are historical pieces of evidences that cryptography had provoked its role during the regime of Egyptian civilization. Cryptography is commonly used for diplomatic communication and message transmission during war times. No one can forget the historical usage of Enigma, a famous cryptographic technique by the German army during World War II. Apart from these applications, cryptography is used to protect the data carried by individuals and corporates. <coughs> these are a few keywords which need to be known by anyone who deals with cryptography and network security. I am not going to elaborate on these terms. Rather, I am providing you with the spark to ignite the flame of cryptography in you. More terms could be found in RFC 2828, which defines all the terms used concerning cryptography. This document could be found in the official website of IEDF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. If you are interested, you can go through the RFC 2828 to know more about these terms. One of the basic parts of security in the OSC security architecture which defines what attacks are, what are the various security mechanisms and what security services need to be satisfied by any service provider who offers a communication service. Let us get into the definitions. An attack is any action initiated by an adversary that compromises the sorry compromises the security of information owned by an organization and an individual as well a security mechanism is a process that is designed to detect prevent or recover from any security attack a security service is one which enhances the security of the data processing systems and information transfers within and between organizations Two common technologies used in the domain of security are threat and attack. Most people find it hard to differentiate between these terms. Let me try to help you differentiate between these technologies. A threat is a possible danger that might exploit a vulnerability. It may be a bug in the system which may or may not be noticed by the developer at the time of release of the software. An intelligent adversary is capable of identifying this vulnerability and initiate an attack. Therefore, an attack 
is a process using which an adversary assaults a system using the vulnerability in the system. The attacker uses it to evade the security services and violate the security policy of the system. For example, most users may be unaware of open ports in a system. The open port acts as a threat. It may be used by an attacker to have access over some document in your system. The system the attack. Hope I have clearly distinguished between a threat and an attack. Coming to the attacks, attacks are classified into two types, namely passive attack and active attack. Hearing the term passive and active, some may think that the impact of passive attacks may be less compared to that of an active attack. Practically speaking, both passive and active attacks are comparatively dangerous and the level of damage created depends on the attitude of the adversary. Coming down to the level in specific, passive attacks attempt to learn or make use of the information from the system without affecting any of the system resources. Hence, it makes it very difficult to find out whether an attack has happened or not. On the other hand, active attacks directly have their hand over the resources or affect the operations loan to the resource of interest, which may result in modification of the data stream or crafting of a false data stream which may almost resemble the virtual data stream. Release of message content and traffic analysis are certain examples of passive attacks. Masquerading, replay, modification, and turning it off service are examples of active attacks. The illustrations of the examples mentioned here are discussed in the forthcoming slides. Let us start from the passive attacks. The first one is the release of message contents. It could be observed that the names of the sender are named Bob and the receiver is named Alice and the adversary is named Dart. Some people consider this as a formal representation and some others do not. The characters are named so that it makes it convenient for people to remember the parties involved in the communication rather than getting confused with character notations like A, B or D. The first mention of these characters appeared in the context of cryptography in an article published by Rivest, Shamir and Adelman, the founders of RSA in 1978. Apart from the perspective of understanding, neither Alice nor Bob has a significant contribution in cryptography. There are furthermore characters which you can find if you go through the Wikipedia page of Alice and Bob. Now let us come to the subject. Bob intends to send a message to Alice in an open communication channel. In the event of the message being sent, Dar taps it to the channel and exposes the message to some other party or the public. Many of you would have come across news channels which provide news on tapped messages between political leaders or in big lakes where you could find confidential government data which are exposed to the public. The traffic analysis is with a high degree of passiveness. When Bob communicates with Alice, Dot does not tap the communication channel and expose any message. Rather, he just observes the communication between the two parties. This may be a potential information for some other party who wants to understand the relationship between Alice and Bob. Now coming to the active attacks. The first example is the masquerading attack. This is similar to the physical forgery which we have experienced. Here Dot pretends to be Bob and sends a message to Alice. We too might have received Bob's email stating that we are eligible for some offer or requesting some money under the banner of a reputed company. These messages are crafted in such a way that it resembles an authenticated message from the company. The second example quoted here is replay attack. In this scenario, Bob sends a message to Alice. Dot gets a copy of the message and sends it again and again to Alice. Sometimes pushes Alice to a state to conclude that the legitimate message sent by Bob is also a crafted one. The continuous replay may result in another state called denial of service. 
The next example of an active attack is the modification of message. The message, when getting transmitted from one media to another, is subjected to several transformations. Hence, it is vulnerable to modifications, even if a change is done in a bit-level transmission. However, there are incidents observed where an adversary intentionally intervenes and manipulates the message sent by Bob to Alice. The last example is the denial of service. Here, Bob is a legitimate user who has access towards the server. Darth, by some means, restricts the access of Bob to the server. One of the possibilities may be flooding the traffic, which makes the router so busy in managing the flood rather than caring for the request of Bob. It is usually less possible to get access to your resource amidst a flood or network. Till now, we have come across an overview of the attacks. Let us now move towards the services which need to be ensured by a service provider while offering a communication service. These services are provided depending on the type of resource involved in the communication. H800 defines a security service as a service provided by a protocol layer of communicating open systems which ensures adequate security of the system or data transfers. Earlier I had discussed RFC 2828. This document provides an elaborate definition for all the services discussed in this part. H.800 categorizes services into five divisions which may have further subdivisions too. The top five divisions are Authentication, Access Control, Data Confidentiality, Data Integrity, and Non-Repetition. Let us start with Authentication. Authentication is a service that assures that communication is authentic or trustable. Though the term trust has a different meaning in specific terms of security, we discuss the term in a broader perspective for now. On receipt of a message from the sender, the receiver must be able to assure that the message is from the source which it claims to be. Secondly, it has to assure that the communication is not initiated or interfered by a masquerading adversary. H.800 defines two authentication services, namely Peer Entity Authentication and Data Origin Authentication. The Peer Entity Authentication provides the evidence to ensure the identity of a peer entity in an association. This ensures that the authenticating authority is not a masquerade or an unauthorized replay of a previous connection. Data origin authentication provides evidence that ensures the source of a data unit. This is used in applications like email. However, data authentication or data origin authentication does not provide any protection against duplication or modification. Access control is defined as the ability to limit or control the access of a resource in any system. Any entity trying to gain access over a resource need to be identified or authenticated to get its access rights trailer. Confidentiality is the service which protects a message from passive attacks. This ensures that the message is not accessed by any entity apart from the entities involved in the communication. There are four classes of confidentiality namely connection confidentiality, connectionless confidentiality, selective field confidentiality and traffic flow confidentiality. Connection confidentiality ensures the data protection of all user data in a connection. Connectionless confidentiality protects all user data in a single data path. Selective field confidentiality provides confidentiality of selected fields within the user data in a connection or a data block. Traffic flow confidentiality protects the information about the flow of traffic which is much effective against the traffic analysis attack mentioned in the passive attacks. Data integrity assures that the data received at the destination is the same as sent by an authorized entity. It also ensures that no modification, insertion, deletion or replay is done over the message. 
data integrity has five subdivisions namely connection integrity with recovery connection integrity without recovery selective field connection integrity connection loss integrity and selective field connection loss integrity connection integrity with recovery ensures the integrity of all user data in a connection and detects any modification insertion deletion or replay of any data within an entire data sequence in case of any modification being detected recovery will be attempted connection integrity without recovery ensures that the integrity of all user data in a connection and detects any modification insertion deletion or replay of any data within an entire data sequence this helps in detection but does not attempt any recovery selective field connection integrity ensures the integrity of selected fields within the user data of a data block transferred over a connection and helps in identification whether the selected fields have been modified inserted deleted or replay connectionless integrity ensures the integrity of a single connectionless data block and helps in the detection of data modification selective field connectionless in integrity ensures the integrity of selected fields within a single connectionless data block it also helps in the determination of whether the selected field have been modified or not non repetition non repetition prevents the sender or receiver from denying a transmitted message there are two types of non repetition namely non repetition at origin and non repetition at the destination non repetition at origin displays or ensures the proof that the message was sent by the specified party non repetition at destination ensures the proof that the message was received by the specified party therefore the event of sending as well reception cannot be denied by the parties involved in the communication apart from the above mentioned services there is another service called availability both h.800 and rfc 2828 define availability to be a property of a system or a system resource being accessible and usable upon demand by an authorized system entity denial of services and attack that prevents the availability service peeking into the security mechanisms the security mechanisms listed as per x.800 are given here Security mechanisms may be classified into specific security mechanisms and pervasive security mechanisms. The functionalities of specific security mechanisms are confined to a particular protocol layer, whereas the pervasive security mechanisms are not specific to any service mentioned earlier or to any protocol layer. Let us first go through the specific security mechanisms. Encipherment is a mechanism which utilizes mathematical algorithms to transform the data into a form which is not readily intelligible this may deploy a cryptographic algorithm to achieve this a digital signature is a mechanism that helps the user to ensure the identity of the center and to verify the in integrity of the message there are different techniques associated with this which shall be discussed in later parts of this course access control deploys mechanisms like access control lists to ensure access rights to the resources data integrity deploys mechanisms like checksums message digests etc to assure the integrity of a data unit or a stream of data authentication exchange is a mechanism intended to ensure the identity of an entity involved in the communication by mutual or trusted information exchange Traffic padding is a mechanism in which padding bits are inserted in a data stream to divert the adversary from attempts towards traffic analysis. Routing control helps in availing secure routes for certain data. It also helps in the change of routes when a security breach is suspected. Notarization is a mechanism which employs a trusted third party to endorse the 
trustability of a data or resource is changed during a communication. Coming to the pervasive security mechanism, trusted functionality ensures that the perceived data or resource is correct concerning a criterion like a security policy. Security label marks a resource to designate it of possessing the security attributes required for the communication. Even detection helps in the recording and detection of security relevant events like a policy violation. A security audit trial is a mechanism in which the data or events are collected to the subject to subject them to a security audit. Security recovery deals with the request from event handling and management functions and takes recovery actions. The table described here clearly depicts the relationship between services and mechanisms. For example, it could be observed that node registration ensures non repudiation These are the reference text which I have utilized for the preparation of this material. Apart from these, the major reference includes the book Cryptography and Network Security authored by William Stalins. You can use any book from 4th edition to 6th edition for these topics to get cover. If you have any questions, please feel free to interact through the discussion forum.